Now we're turning on the ramp here. I need everyone to reach under their seats and grab your paddle. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We're we'll we'll waiting for our little duckies to get out of the way here. So we're about to get in the water. Here we go. Uh, it's a little bit scary though. Okay, we're floating. So guys, um, I'm here at the Galveston Shore. I'm trying to get on the boat, but I really don't know um, how it feels like, but this is gonna be like my first time. And I'm trying to get on a, on a helicopter too. So stay with me guys. So yeah, this is, uh, this is the boat I'm about to get on. And uh, if any of you guys ever been on something like this before, gonna like a, it's like a tall boat it's just gonna take me on the water and I actually paid and it's like $20 and I think it's like 15 minutes ride so it's actually hot right here and um, you know for p.m. and this is like people getting on actually this is the boat So it's gonna actually ride from this Galveston shore line, shore wall, and then it's gonna, uh, you know, get in the water. It's gonna be like a 15 minute tour. So it's gonna be my first experience. So I'll get on this tall boat right now and see how it feels like. How many people, I'm um, sorry guys, how many people can this boat really take? Uh, 16? Well, 14. 16, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. 28 probably. 28? Oh wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Finally, if we have to abandon ship, make sure you grab a life jacket first, find your way to the nearest exit, which is guess where? Everywhere. Nope, not the back. There's going to be a ladder up there. The exit is every row, every window. All right? All right, everybody that has a yellow ticket, go ahead and get it out. I'm going to rip it in half. While I'm doing that, I also want to tell you, this is a coupon for a couple places around town. It doesn't say on there, but you can use it to get 10% off at Mario's Italian Restaurant on 61st. I'm going to show you where that, or Dave's going to show you where that is. You can also use it to get a half hour extra on a slingshot rental, which is a three wheel two-seater car and you can use it at a bait shop Dave's gonna show you so well also I'm doing I'm always just curious where's everybody anybody visit from out of state I know you guys are Louisiana from Colorado Colorado yeah Colorado Louisiana do you know them they're Louisiana Mississippi
right there. That's perfect. Preston off and tell you a little bit about Galveston. Over the past few hundred years, Galveston has had a very rich history in the state of Texas and a lot of the Southwest. In the 1800s, Galveston was the wealthiest city in the whole, in the entire South, and it was also the most populous city in the South. A lot of people don't know that. Um, one reason for that was we have a large shallow water shipping port, so a lot of the imports and exports that came into the state and the Southwest came through Galveston. We also, uh, between the early 1900s and the mid-1950s, we had a large military presence here. We had a fort here called Fort Crockett. It was an army artillery installation. They left in the mid-50s. And most of the things uh, that the government put here for the military have long since uh, been dismantled or destroyed or taken down. But a few of the things that the military put here are still here. And one of those things is straight ahead of us, the Galveston Pleasure Pier. The Pleasure Pier was completed in 1945 at the end of World War II. It cost about a million dollars to build. It was originally a recreation center for the military and their families that were stationed here. When the military left in the 50s, they gave the Pleasure Pier, they gave the pier to the city. The city had some venues out there. They had a uh, dance, dance floor, a bandstand, some other venues, but over the years the city couldn't make the pier pay for itself. So in 1963, as a result of the storm in 1902, they started to build the seawall that you see here in our lab. They completed the first three miles by 1904. Sixties in the early 60s, the seawall is now 10 miles long. If you're left here behind the little red sign, you'll see the slinging shots here. It's $99 for an hour and a half. If you take your duck tour ticket there, you get an extra half hour free. Pretty neat little way to fool around the town. Great in the United States in the 1800s and early 1900s. Don't so return on the ramp here. I need everyone to reach under their seats and grab your paddle. That's we'll wait for a little duckies to get out of the way here. So we're about to get in the water. <laughs> and we're floating. Now, I'm going to ask that a couple of people can move to the other side of the deck if at all possible. Two or three people there. Thank you very much. That even sounds. All right. Now I'll move back once we get on land. <laughs> now I'm going to stop here and engage the flux capacitor. Yes. And we're off.
on the left is the aquarium. This is the sixth largest aquarium in the United States. A lot of tropical fish, uh, freshwater fish in there also. They have a live penguin, penguin display. And here last year, about a year ago, they brought in two harbor seals that they rescued in California. The middle of the pyramid is the rainforest. That's kind of self-explanatory. It's a tropical they got set up like a tropical forest in there. Tropical plants, animals, fish, uh, they hatch butterflies out there. It's a pretty neat thing to see. And the pyramid on the right is the Discovery Pyramid. It's dedicated to the discovery of different things. They have rotating exhibits in there that they're rotating in few months. A lot of duck boats that you're riding on. The ducks were first built in the early 1940s during World War II as a means of tra a transport for the soldiers to get them from ship to shore. They built about 21,000 of them during the war, and they cost about $4,500 each to build.
built before 1900. Now in the 60s and the 70s, downtown Galveston was not a place anybody went. It was run down and the, uh, all these buildings were all derelict. Uh, there was nothing to do down here. It's not a place you wanted to go. In the mid-1980s, a number of businessmen saw the uh, the potential in downtown and looked at a lot of the architect and, and loved it. So they spent a lot of money in the 80s to help restore a lot of these buildings down here. They, Turned a lot of the upper floors into lofts and the lower floors into shops and businesses. The Mardi Gras Arch. And that stays up there all year long. At night it's all lit up. The white building on your right is the Tremont, Ho the Tremont Ho House. This was originally an office building. It's one of Galveston's finer hotels now. Now if you think about it, during the 1900 storm, the water down here was so high the people were actually just able to swim up to the Tremont house and swim into the second floor windows for safety. A lot of businesses and restaurants and bars are modeled after a famous street in London. Probably the most popular place along the strand here is here on our right is McKinney's Confectionery. It's an old fashioned ice cream parlor, candy factory, coffee shop. Oh, yeah. They have saltwater taffy pools there with us throw samples out to the audience. If you want to get your sweet tooth on, that's the place to go. Coming up on our left will be Sanger Fest Park. A lot of events there, they have a stage there, they have concerts there on the weekend. You see the big chair you can take your picture on. They have the big chess board out there in the middle of the square. If you want to play a game of chess? Now this, the strand along this portion of the strand, this was the main point of commerce for Texas in the 18, a lot of the southwest in the 1800s. They actually called this the Wall Street of the southwest. All these buildings you see along both sides of the road here were all built before 1900. As you can imagine, all these shops were flooded with salt water and it was here for a long time, so they all had to be completely gutted and rebuilt. On our right is the 1910 Ice House. This is where they first commercially produced ice in the state. They had their own power plant in the back. If you come down here and walk it around, you go to the other side of the building, you'll see the original smokestack from that power plant. Now coming up on our right here, on the side of the building, they just did this about just last year. They brought in a couple of artists and painted this girl, this seascape, on the side of the building. It's pretty neat to look at, and it's a really good place if you're down here on the strand to walk up and stand under the I Love Galveston sign there and take some pictures. Take some pictures and post them into your social tweety Facebook -y thing. <laughs> Now this part of the strand here is mostly bars, they're right next door to each other, so you can walk into one, walk out right to the next one, crawl out, crawl in right to the next one. <laughs> Straight ahead of us, you see the white Art Deco building there, that's Sherman Moody Plaza, that was built in 1914. This was the home of uh, Galveston's Union Station where all the trains came in and out. Now it's mostly office space, Except for here on the first floor, you'll see where it says Railroad Museum. Uh, that's the Galveston Railroad Museum. It's a pretty neat place to go. Back behind the building there, they have a lot of, uh, they have some trains, they have some locomotives, a couple of steam engines, a lot of uh, passenger cars that you can tour. And the inside is set up just like an old railroad uh, depot in there. Again, most of them are concentrated to our left on the other side of downtown is the East End Historic District. Not only are the tree sculptures over there, but there are some really, really beautiful pre-1900 homes over there. There's a lot of them. And again, I suggest going to the visitors there. They can give you information on everything. And right next to us, the hallway Galveston, or the headquarters of Galveston Fire Department. Now since it's next to the fire department here on our right, just as we go by the building, you'll see two more tree carvings. Not the turtle, that's fire glass, but you're gonna see a Dalmatian dog, and he's staring at a fire hydrant over there between the trees that's spouting water. Now 
Now again, we're on 25th Street. This is part of the Mardi Gras Parade where it runs from the sing along clubs to downtown behind us. So you might notice as we go along in the trees to our left and the right, especially to our left, you might notice a lot of bees in these trees. I don't know what those trees did to preserve those bees. They must have lived in their leaves. <laughs> But the intersection ahead of us here is the Texas Heroes Park. Somebody, but this is another gift from his Henry Rosenberg. It was built in 1900 at a cost of fifty thousand dollars. It's a tribute to the heroes of the Texas Revolution. On top there is a statue of Victory. She's pointing north. She's actually pointing towards the Saint Jacinto Battleground, where Texas won its independence from Mexico in 1836. As we go by, if you look at the lady here on our left, you notice she's got her body drawn in. Now you can tell if a house or a building was built before 1900. If you look at a yellow house on your right here, right beside the door, beside, you'll see a small plaque there to the left of the doorway. On that plaque it says 19, uh, 1900 storm survivor. So whenever you see a home or a building with that mark on it, that's what that indicates. Thank you know, when they come to go.